It is 2019, as well you know, and it seems a sensible way to start the year by having a look at the predictions I made for 2018. This comes ahead of my predictions for this year, which will be out in a couple of days. I made five predictions last year, and if anything, I was just continuing proof that humans are bad at predicting the future. So let's, let's dive into, one by one, what I thought would happen. Prediction number one was that high prices would drive down quality in green coffee. Now, on the face of it, this looks just incredibly wrong because 2018 was a year where in the C market, the commodity market price, that kind of global benchmark for coffee's value, well, that was incredibly, disgustingly, abhorrently low. It was a bad year for, for coffee's price and value. And therefore, it seems like I'm just horribly, horribly wrong here. What I will do is try and grasp at a straw or two, salvage a point, which is that competition has driven down quality a little bit. I think that uh, we, I've certainly seen some roasters start to buy slightly lower qualities to remain competitive and try and retain some margin in their business as high levels of competition are driving down price. But while I think we've seen a small drop in quality, I don't think I've necessarily predicted the correct lever that caused that to happen. Prediction number two, I predicted some problems would happen when Amazon and Whole Foods kind of mushed together and, and coffee got caught in the middle. This was flat out wrong. It's been a weird year for Amazon. Uh, not a great year in many ways, I suppose a good year in others, but on this point, I was just straight up flat out wrong. It kind of weirds me out how little uh, has been done really to amalgamate Whole Foods and Amazon, certainly from what I'm seeing. Uh, so just straight wrong. Let's move on. Prediction number three was that people would start taking coffee that was grown in China more seriously. Now, I think I was right, but I also maybe have a couple of biases here. Firstly, I included China in the second edition of the World Atlas of Coffee that came out in 2018. And in addition, Square Mile roasted and sold its first coffee from China. Now, this also, however, gave me a particularly interesting insight into consumer behavior. This coffee sold incredibly well. People were extremely interested to taste coffee from China. People had expectations. I've, I've also seen several other quality-focused roasters in the UK and around the world start to offer some of the better coffees coming out of the Yunnan province in China. There's some people working pretty hard to export some good stuff there. So on this one, I feel reasonably validated. So yeah. Let's move on. My fourth prediction was that uh, some very quality focused businesses in the UK with great acclaim would disappear. Now, I'll be honest, I, I thought it would be a slightly rougher year than it turned out to be. There seems to be a great deal of hesitation in the market still. But uh, yes, in some cases, sadly, uh, I have been proven correct here. What I'll do rather than name individual names is link to in the description below a map uh, maintained by a guy called Phil Wayne of the closed specialty businesses in London. And at the bottom of the map is the most recent ones. And if you have a little look through, I think you'll see some businesses that uh, many of us were surprised to see go. Now, this maybe feels like cheating because there's a constant churn in business anyway. You know, some businesses open, some businesses close every year. There's nothing shocking about predicting some businesses will close. So if you don't want to give this one to me, if you feel like this really wasn't earned, sure. That's okay. Uh, maybe give me like a half point. And then my fifth prediction was that Costa would make its specialty move. Now I made this prediction because Costa really seemed to be struggling. Their like for likes were, were down. Their growth was really only through new stores and they needed to do something. I didn't predict that they would be bought by Coca-Cola for nearly $5 billion. That was kind of a surprise, but it's definitely Costa making its play to re retain its relevancy and to find new avenues for growth. So its sale takes it out from the holding company it was under, which is Whitbread, into being part of Coca-Cola, who will turn it into, I suspect, a very widely distributed brand of bottled coffee products. Costa don't currently do any pre-bottled, ready-to-drink products. I'm pretty sure Coca-Cola is gonna slap that brand on bottles of cold brew, bottles of uh, iced lattes, whatever it's gonna be, and, and put that into their distribution system, which is probably the best in the world for beverages. So yeah, I think Costa is gonna see some pretty good growth in the next couple of years, though probably not in its cafes. And that was my predictions for 2018. In summary, I'm gonna have my predictions for 2019 out in uh, two days. So uh, if you'd like to subscribe, there's a little thing that you can push and that's nice. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've got any feedback on my predictions. I feel like I did 
okay. I mean, I got one just flat out horribly wrong, but I feel like I was definitely in the ballpark on some other stuff. Predictions are hard, but it's kind of fun. You know what I mean? Like, this is kind of fun. So I look forward to sharing my 2019 predictions with you soon. I hope the year has started well for you. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.